Welcome, Abnormal Family. We have made it till Saturday. Can you believe it? Saturday night. Well, guys, do we have something special for you. Tonight, at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, we're releasing a premiere. i done a pre-recording with Brittany that had some pretty crazy encounters in her life, along with her family, that she shared with Brooks and Scott and I. Let me tell you, we had a very interesting uh, interview with her that we recorded. It's a little over two hours. It's going to be a really good premiere. Myself, along with Scott and Brooks, and uh, maybe even Sarah and Kaylee, will join you all in the chat of the premiere tonight. And I think you guys are really going to love this one. I would not miss this one if I was you guys. It's going to have a lot of good information in it. Brittany was a great person. A great person to interview and she had a lot of knowledge and her encounters were scary so uh, don't miss tonight's at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time don't forget to smash the like button on this video and on the live tonight and we'll see you in the chat as I always look forward to interacting with you guys I do not wish to state my name for the confidential reasons but I have lived around the rural forests all of my life this story took place in two locations within five to ten miles of each other and happened to me and two other friends of mine. My friends live in one of the most rural areas surrounded by farmland, forests, and the Appalachian Mountains. We were doing things normal people do when they hang out, but as soon as the night fell, the mood changed drastically. I felt as if I was being watched. It was just the beginning of the night, and we started hearing knocking on the back of the house. My friend told me not to worry about it, so we tried to take our minds off of it, but it got louder. Three consistent knocks turned into bangs. My friend had soon fallen asleep, but I hadn't. All of a sudden, I found myself peering outside of a small window. This window was almost ten feet off the ground from outside. My curiosity soon turned to horror as a massive beast turned the corner of the house. Long ears, ragged hair, and some human features, only visible by the dim night sky. The one feature that stood out to me was the eyes. Large, glowing yellow eyes, with hardly a pupil in sight, gazed back at me. I was paralyzed with fear, with nothing to do. I tried to wake my friend, but to no avail. After what seemed to be an eternity, it finally walked off. The next morning, I told my friend what I had seen. He didn't want to believe me, but somehow he did. That weekend went on normally and nothing else happened. But when I left, I didn't tell anyone at the chance of being called a liar. This next encounter happened at my friend's house after he had moved houses almost two years after the first encounter. I had arrived at their house on my second visit after my friend had told me he had seen something big, dark, and beastly looking. We had planned to look for this creature, but we had no luck. We were outside in the dead of night trying our luck at finding it. Yeah, Mike, we probably shouldn't have done that, and we are glad we didn't find it, because I'm sure we would have been wishing right now we wouldn't have. It seemed a bit ironic with there being a full moon out. We had then heard a howl that sounded as if it was a wolf mixed with a man's scream. The look on my friend's face was like none other. By the way his friend, by the way my friend looked, he was a skilled hunter and he looked as if he had never heard this sound before. My friends also lived beside a cattle field, so when the howl pierced the air, the cows went berserk, and they ran to the pasture and hid in a corner where they all bunched up. We joked about it and planned it off as nothing, but as we were going inside, those eyes appeared in the darkness. The moon's light shone on its body. I could make out more of its features from where we stood. It was hunched, and it was still seven feet tall, sharp, jagged teeth. Those same pointy ears, and that appeared to be a canine head on a man's body. I urged my friend to go inside, but still haven't told him to this day what I seen. 
I don't want to be called a liar, Mike. Because I know that people don't agree with you on these things, and a lot of people still don't believe. And to some people, well, they just think you're crazy when you talk about these things. You know, I still run into that too uh, in this field. When I talk to some people, they think you're crazy. Some people laugh at you. I've had deputies laugh at me, but also I know deputies that believe too. Um, actually, I know one deputy that was a uh, investigator detective, and um, he truly believes in them. He studied them. So it's just all walks of life believe and don't believe, and the ones that don't, they seem to want to criticize. As far as a walking hunched over, that's been my experience also. The ones I've seen also walk hunched over, so that's very common. The human-like howl scream, that is what I heard the other night on my boots on the ground and I do plan on going back there and trying to capture it I just have to let the rain go away and the flooded waters recede because everything is so flooded I am still planning on doing a boots on the ground though with the flooded conditions at another location hoping that some of these things have been pushed out we'll see if that actually happens or if they go to the trees I'm not sure but I hope you all enjoyed this one and I cannot wait to see you all tonight on the premiere it's going to be a good one guys and until then, keep your head on a swivel, don't be something's dinner, and don't forget to smash that like button.